okay welcome back so in this video I'll be talking about the sonometer so in the last video I talked about the resonance tube which is an application of resonance and here in this video I will be talking about the sonometer which is another application of resonance so in this video I will explain you about three experiments that you can do with the sonometer so be to begin with you need to understand what is a sonometer when can we use a sonometer and why we use a sonometer so actually I answered my last question why we use a sonometer we use a sonometer to uh, like the resonance tube to identify the characteristics of waveforms so to begin with I will introduce you about the concept of an, the sonometer by introducing you with a sample picture so sonometer is something like this you have the sonometer box here with some holes so this is very similar to the technique that we have in a guitar in which we plug we plug this string and the waveform that is performed here waveform that is going on here will be heard through these holes right so it's very similar to the technique that is going on inside a guitar so there are various types of sonometers there are sonometers in which there is only one string and also there may be there are sonometers in which we have two strings for but for most of these occasions I, and in this video I will be using a sonometer with a single string as it is easy and also it is easy to do the experiment right so first of all let let's inter uh, let's uh, identify the parts of a sonometer all right so in this example and the, as i mentioned i will be using a sonometer with a single wire so here is the string or the sonometer string or a simple wire and we have a weight here right so there's a fixed tension you can change the tension so we'll do an experiment where we change the tension of the string uh, when we identify about the factors that affect the sonometer behavior all right so this is the weight so we pr provide with a uh, fixed tension at the beginning and we have uh, a fixed bridge here and a movable bridge here so the fixed bridge is fixed to the sonometer box <coughs> so movable bridge like it's very similar to the concept that you learned in a vernier caliber it's like the movable jaw you can uh, move it along this box this way or this way so this part this part from this uh, apex here to this apex so from this point to this point of the fixed bridge to the movable bridge this length this length we can change that right we can change that that length is the length that we take as the stationary wave length now now you know that if we keep this movable bridge as it is on the sonometer box if we keep it keep as it is these two points now will act as two fixed points or al although this movable bridge is movable bridge is movable along this box when you keep it still these two points will now act as two fixed points so the waveform between two fixed points is a stationary wave so we can the we can form a stationary wave between these two uh, string bridge sorry these two bridges right these two bridges and identify as to how we can different factors of uh, different physical quantities affect the behavior of such a wave pattern all right so since i explained to you about sonometer so actually a sonometer is an audiometer audiometer what i mean by an audiometer is that it is used to it is used to identify the resonance but its principal technique used to identify the resonance as in the case of the resonance tube is the sound that is produced so it is also called an audiometer which is used to measure the sensitivity of hearing right so several experiments can be performed about the physical quantities and the relationships so let's investigate those so first of all before investigating about the experiments that you can do or you can perform with a sonometer you need to identify about the performance or how sonometers work now I, in the last video I explained to you about the performance of a resonance tube that is when the tuning fork is kept a little above the resonance tube how stationary waves are formed in closed end and the open end 
Similarly, when a tuning fork is vibrating with a certain frequency and you introduce the tuning fork to the sonometer box, you keep it on the sonometer box or sometimes you also keep it very close to the sonometer box or very close to the sonometer string and then the length of the string or its tension is adjusted so that the string vibrates with the same frequency. Now, since both systems vibrate with the same frequency, resonance takes place. So resonance, again, here is the key to the experiment that uh, the sonometers are working. Resonance is the key to the performance of sonometers. All right. So since resonance is the key to sonometers and for resonance to happen in this setup, you need to form stationary waves. Let's find out how we form stationary waves and let's find out as to which experiments we can do and which observations we can get and which conclusions we can derive. So to begin with, I'll explain you of the methods as to how a sonometer system can be made to resonate. Now there are three main methods, so you can do either of these, right? Uh, you can do, you can uh, perform the resonance. You can actually make a uh, sonometer system to resonate using either of these methods. So the best method of uh, finding here is actually the stationary wave method. Beat method is also better, but by listening to the change of frequencies is, I think, as the least efficient method. The best efficient is the stationary wave method. So let's examine about these different types of methods. The first method, the stationary wave method, which I consider the most efficient method of resonating a sonometer system, includes keeping paper strips. Paper strips means these are very, very small, right? Very, very small means very, uh, paper strips which have mass of milli or micrograms, very small papers, like very small threads you use to sew clothes, right? Very small threads like paper strips. You keep it on between the fixed and the movable bridges. So, so if you take this sonometer, so you keep some paper strips here, one or more paper strips on the distance or the uh, area between the fixed bridge and the movable bridge. So this is the distance though. This is a fixed point, this is a fixed point. So this is the length that we are subjecting to stationary waves. So you keep a paper strip or a number of paper strips on this area and then place the tuning fork and adjust the distance between these two bridges. Now although you adjust the distance between these two bridges, the two bridges when kept stationary on the sonometer box will act as two fixed points. So you can still form a stationary wave form between these two fixed points. So you keep the tuning fork and adjust the distance until these paper strips fall. So you know that when the resonance occurs, the system vibrates with its maximum frequency. So it gains a maximum height from the main position. So the amplitude is very much high and due to the maximum amplitude that the object can get uh, at the moment of resonance, the tuning forks, the total force for provided to the tuning fork will be greater than the weight of the tuning fork so the tuning fork accelerates in the direction of the net force so what actually happens is that the paper strip will fall off the string so that is the technique about the stationary wave method the same uh, uh, technique that is same uh, uh, technique which is same to the method uh, similar method is used in the bead method what you do in the bead method is that you plug the string between the two bridges, right? You plug the string, then keep the tuning fork and move away the movable bridges until the number of beads reach the minimum. Now you know that what is meant by a beat. The beat is the change or the difference of frequencies. Now if you have, uh, say, two systems in which one system, uh, which is which has uh, actually a changing or a variable frequency of say 250 hertz and another system of 260 hertz when you change the frequency so that the now initially the difference is 260 minus 250 which is 10 hertz so at uh, one second 10 beats can be heard what actually happens is that when you change the frequency so that 
the difference between these frequencies are a minimum so that now say uh, you increase the frequency of 250 hertz to say 254 hertz and you decrease the uh, frequency of 260 hertz say to 255 hertz now the difference is the final difference is 255 hertz minus 254 hertz so the difference of frequencies is 1 hertz so you will hear here 1 bit now when you decrease the difference between these two frequencies the number of beats also will decrease so when the number of beat beats read the minimum or when the number of beats is approximately zero resonance occurs so beat method is another occasion in which res resonance occurs so in the first method we did we made resonance when we observed resonance by observing the falling off of the strips because at the resonance the system vibrates with the highest amplitude so at the second instance what we did was we changed the frequencies so that the when the number of beats is minimum you can again reach a resonance the third method is by listening to the change of frequencies but you have to be an avid listener for that the reason being you have to actually tune your ear to do that so that's the reason as to why i call this as the most ineffective but yet an accurate method so by listening to the change of frequencies listen to the pitch of the sound emitted by the fork in here then plug the string and the two bridges and move away the movable bridge until you hear a similar pitch so what you do is that you plug the string you plug the uh, actually you hit uh, you hit the tuning fork on some surface and then you hear the frequency then you actually tune your ear to that frequency you can still hear in your mind and then you can change the distance between the bridges so that you can hear the same pitch so when the frequency is the same resonance occurs so all these three techniques finally produce a resonance so resonance is actually the key to sonometer uh, to a sonometer system and this experiment that we do using a sonometer so having explained all these concepts uh, about the introduction to the experiment that can be performed using a simple sonometer let me introduce the three experiments that i will be explaining to you on this video so you know that uh, f is directly proportional to 1 over l so that when the length of the uh, the wavelength or the actually the length of the string that is subjected to this resonance decreases you can when you the frequency increases the dec length decreases and when you increase the tension when you increase the full frequency and when you increase the tension the frequency increases and when you decrease the mass per unit length the frequency also so you can actually prove this so this actually proves these three experiments act as proofs of these derivations so t is the tension f is the frequency l is the length of the string or the use length of the string used or the length subjected to the experiment that is that the distance between those two fixed length points the distance between the top point of the fixed jaw and the top point of the movable jaw and m is the mass per unit length so mass per unit length is mass divided by length so the first experiment includes to includes the final conclusion to show that the frequency is inversely proportional to the length of the string that we are subjecting to this experiment so to perform this experiment we have to keep the tension and the mass per unit length constant so you know that we for all these uh, three experiments we use the same formula f equals one over one over two l root t over m so root t over m is now t over m you take the proportion and you take the whole root you multiply it or you divide by 2 l so that is equal to frequency so l is equal to half root t over m times 1 upon f now you know since uh, the tension and we keep the tension and the mass per unit length constant t by m is a constant so root t by m is a constant so half times root t by m is a constant so we uh, we change the frequency and uh, frequency is actually the independent variable l is the dependent variable so frequency we take x, x variable x uh, values uh, length as the y value so we can draw a graph y equals mx and using the gradient we can find different quantities so first of all before getting the recordings before rec before recording 
the information that we can do here first of all let's think about the steps that we can do here right so as the method first of all you have to arrange the sonometer and place some paper strips between the two bridges so that's the basic step that you can do for any sonometer experiment then use the tuning fork beating with the highest frequency and keep it on the sonometer box so now you know that frequency is the independent variable so you have to change the frequency and take the record the lens that resonate according to that frequency so you have to keep the tuning fork beating with the highest frequency and then adjust the distance between the bridges so that at some distance the papers fall so that's actually the distance at which resonance occurs now then measure the length between the two bridges so this is the freak the length between the two bridges is the length that you can measure for the uh, tuning fork with the highest frequency you can repeat the experiments with other forks in the sequence of decreasing order decreasing order uh, of the frequencies and record the minimum length required to remove the strips of the string so what you do is you take different values for f so you take f to be in the decreasing order and you take different values for l so those are about the steps of doing this experiment then what you do is you according to the equation that you get here l equals half root t over m times 1 over 1 f so what you do here is that you plot the graph between l and 1 over f so 1 over f is the independent variable l is the dependent variable if the graph is a straight line in the form of y equal to mx we can prove that l is directly proportional to 1 over f or l is inversely proportional to f or f is inversely proportional to l so l is inversely proportional to f is the same as f is inversely proportional to l so then the gradient of the graph will be half times root t, t over m so however we know that t over m is v v is the velocity of sound in air so velocity of sound in air is equal to the root of the ratio of the tension of the string over the mass per unit length so the gradient is equal to uh, actually half times v so velocity of sound in air is two times m so that is actually an additional additional step you can take actually we need to find the relationship we need to prove the relationship between the length of the uh, string that we are subjecting for this experiment and the frequency additionally you can also find a relationship for the velocity you can find the velocity of sound in air using the gradient of the graph so that is actually an additional step this is the main step that the we need to prove this so in the last example I proved that the frequency is inversely proportional to the length so in this example I will be proving that the frequency is directly proportional to the tension now according to this equation f equals 1 over 2l root t of m if we, if we are to perform an experiment to show that f is directly proportional to root t we have to keep the length and the mass per unit length constant you have to keep the length and the mass per unit length constant so you can arrange the equation so that the length and the mass per unit length are constant like this so f is equal to 1 upon 2l root m times root t so since length 2 and this root m is a constant this whole term is a constant the term inside this bracket is a constant so similar to that that we did in the last experiment when we showed that uh, the value of f is inversely proportional to l we can draw a graph of y equals mx now in the last experiment what we did was that we changed the frequencies we change the frequencies and we found for the values of L. We found the values of L that coincide at the points of resonance with these different frequencies. However, in the case of showing that the frequency is directly proportional to the tension, what you have to do is that as I mentioned in the first part of the video, you can change the tension. To change the tension, what you do is that you change the mass. Now in this diagram you saw this diagram you saw the weight right you can add weight so that the tension increases you know that since this string is not moving in this direction there is no relative motion you can say that the tension that is building up on the string is equal to the weight of this object so you can change the weight of this object and you can increase or decrease the tension right so that is the way as to how we change the tension So as the method 
We arrange the solometer and place some paper strips between the two bridges and then using the tuning fork, beating in the highest frequency as we did in the last experiment. We keep it on the sonometer box and then keeping the distance between the bridges constant because we need to keep L constant and to keep M constant we use the same string. We adjust the tension by adding weight and record the weight of the tension needed to remove the paper strips. So removing the paper strips is the occasion in which resonance occurs. So we can repeat the experiment with other folks in the sequence of decreasing order of their frequencies and record the minimum tension needed to remove these strips of the string. So that's the same experiment that we did when we changed the frequencies and we found the lengths. Now here we change the frequencies and we find the tensions. So then we plot the graph and if the graph is a straight line, straight line in the form of y equals mx, uh, we can say that f is directly proportional to root t, right? and uh, that's it about that experiment so as the last experiment that we can do using the sonometer what we do is that we have to show that the frequency is inversely proportional to the root of mass per unit length so actually this experiment actually this experiment is the most difficult experiment i consider because to change the mass per unit length you can't use a single string there are two ways of performing this experiment. One way is to find use the same use one stringed sonometer, and the second way is to find a sonometer with two strings. And you can keep one string constant, and you can change the mass per unit length uh, for the other string. But actually, it's uh, more time consuming and time it's uh, more uh, inefficient. I consider. So the best method is to take a sonometer with a single string as we have been doing so far and to change the unit per mass length by changing the strings. So to perform this experiment you have to keep the length and the tension constant. So as in the last two experiments we can arrange the equation in the form of y equal mx here. We can arrange the sonometer and place the same strip. You can do the same experiments. So what we change here is you keep the tension or the weight of the object constant you keep the length of the object constant you change for different strings of different mass lengths so mass length is as i mentioned mass divided by the length you can take even this uh, different strings of different uh, actually the same length but different masses we need the ratio of mass to length to be different so mass per unit length should be different to make this experiment a success so we repeat the experiments with other folks in the sequence of decreasing order and record the value of m for different strings and we plot the graph if the graph is a straight line in the form of y equals mx that goes uh, through the origin we can say that f is directly proportional to 1 over m right so this is about the other concept and we can also do this experiment by using two strings connected parallelly across two bridges then by changing the first string with some other strings with ha which have the same m values we can measure the minimum length that is required in the second string to be adjusted to make the system resonate so that's it about the resonance experiments using the sonometer so in this ex video i explained to you about the sonometer different parts of a sonometer when can we use a sonometer why we need a sonometer and explained to you about the methods that the sonometer can be made to resonate and Furthermore, I did three experiments, three experiments to show you about the characteristics, the physical characteristics that affect the behavior of a sonometer. So in the next video, I'll be explaining you with some new concepts about practicals on physics based on heat and the other concepts. So thanks for watching this video and see you then.